Superstars, welcome back. We're doing unsymmetric beam bending, which is no one's favorite thing to do, but we're gonna make it simple, okay? Here we go. Unsymmetric beam bending, and to make it a little bit more challenging, I've even got you an unsymmetric beam, okay? We've got this, this is the end of a beam, okay? A square beam sticking up there, right? And this side is 125 and this side is 150, okay? Now don't be confused by the axis here. It's got Y here, Z here, and X there. If we just took that and we rotated it, I think you'll see that that's just our regular normal axis there. So don't be like too scared of that, okay? We have on a 30 degree angle coming, so this, this angle is in the Y Z plane, okay? So take a line out here. There is an 850 newton meter torque, a moment applied along that line, okay? So it's a twisting of the beam in this weird direction here, okay? And we're asked to find the stress, the sigma stress, at each corner, at A and B and C and D, okay? Now what is sigma stress from bending look like? Well, that's the flexure formula, isn't it? MC over I, okay? Now what's the hard thing here? The hard thing here, there's a couple. Number one, we're talking about bending around a different axis here, okay? So look here. If I have this beam, I'm kind of trying to hold this just like this one is. I've kind of shaded one side black and one side's red, so you can see it's a square. Um, but as I hold it like this, right, um, if I bend like this, which axis am I bending around? And think about this thing making a whole circle. Which axis is going right through the middle of the circle? We call that bending around an axis, right? You can kind of see that. That would be bending around the Y, wouldn't it? That's bending around the y-axis, okay? When I bend around the y-axis, I need the moment of inertia about the y-axis, okay? Now I'm going to bend it towards you, okay, this way. Now, which axis am I bending around? Again, if this made a circle, it's that axis, right? That would be bending around the z-axis, okay? So you've got to be able to see those two things in your head, okay? Now, before I even get started on anything, is that something we could calculate? Because we are talking about a rectangular beam here, so that would be 112 bh cubed. The only thing is, is like, what's the base? What's the height, okay? So let's try and do this for IYY. It's 112th. Now, I'm going to do this. You know what? I'm just going to do it in millimeters. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. The base about the Y, so here's the Y, okay? So where's the base? The base is always parallel to the axis you're bending around. So the base is one, two, five. And the height is always perpendicular to the axis you're bending around. So the height, 150. Okay, and that's going to be millimeters cubed. And when I do millimeters cubed times millimeters, it's going to equal millimeters to the fourth, isn't it? Now, how big is that? That's going to be a big number. When you do millimeters, don't be afraid. You're probably going to get like a six or seven digit number. So don't be afraid. Okay, so 125 times 150 cubed equals big number divided by 12 equals. Here's my number. Okay. Three, five, one, five, six, two, five, and then zero, and that's it, right? Yeah. So, uh, uh, 35 million millimeters to the fourth, okay? I know it's going to be big. There it is. So, what is IZZ? Now, we're talking about bending this time towards you, right? So, what is the base? Well, this time, the base is 150, the height is 125. So those two things are just going to change places, right? So it's going to be 112, okay? 150 is the base times 125 cubed. That's the height, which is equal to 
Here we go, one more time. 150 times 125 cubed equals, big number, divided by 12 equals, okay, 244, 14, uh, 062. Don't forget about 0.5. <laughs> 24 million millimeters to the fourth. Okay? So there you go. There's I, Y, Y. There's I, Z, Z. All right? Because I think that this guy right here, this moment that's about some kind of wacky axis there, it, it's going to cause a bending moment around more than one axis at a time. And that's why I have to find two of them, okay? So let's do the next thing. And this is pretty simple, okay? Think back to statics when we had a vector at an angle. What did we do? Bam, we broke it into components. And that's what we're going to do to this, this uh, moment here, okay? So here, imagine your eyeball looking at the origin, okay? What do you see? I see a counterclockwise moment, okay? So I'm going to come over here. And there's gonna, I'm going to break this guy into a component along that line and a component along that line, okay? So over here, I've got this. And over here, I've got that, okay? Again, if my eye is looking towards the origin, what do I see? A counterclockwise moment. If my eye is looking towards the origin, what do I see? A counterclockwise moment, okay? So how big is this Y moment here? Just... You know, break it in just like you would the statics. This guy right here is 850 times the cosine of 30. This guy up here, 850 times the sine of 30. Okay? Sine of 30 is the same as cosine of 60. That's a half. So that's going to be 425 Newton meters around that axis. That's a moment around the Z axis. And then this one down here, can't do that one in my head, clear, 850 times 0.866, that's the cosine of 30, is 736.1, 736.1 Newton meters, okay? Now, remember this, okay, don't, don't be tricked by this, this is in Newton meters, right? And all that stuff over there is in millimeters. So at some point in our life here, we're going to have to do a conversion, okay? Now, let's talk about what these things are doing, okay? You remember this. Stress, when it's in compression, it's a negative value. When stress is in tension, it's a positive value. What does the word tension start with? A positive sign, okay? That's how you can remember that, okay? So what we have to do is at each corner, we have to calculate the stress and we're going to calculate the stress from that guy at, at each corner and the stress at that from that guy at each corner. Some of these corners, the stress is going to be both positive and they're going to add together. Some of them, they're going to be both negative. They'll subtract and they'll still add together, but they'll be negative. And some of them, they'll have a positive component and a negative component, and we'll have to add those together. So let's see if we can figure this out, okay? So what we're going to have is this. We're going to have stress at corner A, Stress at corner B, stress at corner C, and stress at corner D, okay? And at each corner, I'm going to have, what kind of stress am I going to have? I'm going to have MC over I stress, right? And I'm going to have MC over I stress from the Y, and I'm going to have MC over I stress from the Z bending, right? And so for every one of these things, let's just make ourselves a couple of columns here, right? I'm going to have an MC over I from Y on every one of these, and I'm going to have an MC over I from Z from every one of these, right? Okay, now we already know that value. The only thing that we need is, you know, how about this? Do we always know this? If we're bending around the y-axis, right, that's bending this way, what is the distance c? What is the distance c? Well, remember, the distance c is the distance from the neutral axis out to the edge of the part, okay, out to the edge of the part. 
So if I go to this side of the part, it's the same distance as if I go that side of the part. So when I do bending around the Y, right, which is this guy, when I do that, C is always going to be equal to half of 150, isn't it? So it's going to be what? 75. And when I do bending around the Z, the same thing, C this time is always going to be equal to, right, that's bending this way. That's the distance from here to the outside of the part. Okay, and so that's 125 divided by 2. So 62.5, right? 62.5 mm's. So now we know, we know the m's, we know the c's, and we know the i's. I think we fill this in, we're home free. Let's do a little thinking here, okay? First one, okay? Let's do, uh, this is going to be my Y column, and this is going to be my Z column bending, okay? Let me erase this and so we'll have room to do this, okay? All right, here we go. Erasing. Let's just erase all this. Okay, fine. Okay. So corner A is over here, okay? So, and man... It's handy to have a little square beam, right? Because then you can kind of really visualize. You don't have to have a square one. You can have a round one. It's a little bit harder, but it's okay. I cut this on my bandsaw. I cut it like butter, right? So if I do this moment here, this 736 moment, bending around the Y, it bends like this, which puts point A, which is back on this surface over here, in what? That's the compression surface, right? This is the tension side. This is the compression side. So since he's in compression, what? Negative. A is negative from bending around the Y, right? So negative M, and the M is 736.1, okay? And, of course, that's newtons times meters, okay? Times C. What is C? I'm going to have to move my Z over on it. C for bending around the Y is 75 MMs, okay? Over I, and what is I? I don't know. What is I? Oh, it's big, isn't it? 35, 156, 250, and that's MMs to the fourth. So I think the easiest thing to do is convert this meter right here, and then I'll have newtons over millimeter squared, which is a megapascal, right? So let's get rid of that meter. Let's put him on the bottom and put 1,000 MMs on the top, okay? And that gets the Y bending for point A, okay? So let's talk about the Z bending for point A. Here's point A, right? What is the Z bending? Let's see. Z bends it that way, whoop, towards you. And so point A is back here on the back side. So what is point A? He's in tension, right? So he's going to be positive, right, from the Z bending. So... What's that moment? 425 times 1,000. Get rid of that, that Newton, I mean that meter, right? Times C, which is going to be 62.5 divided by I, which is 24414062.5. Okay? That's that. Okay? Now, you're going to see these same numbers over and over and over. Okay? Let's talk about B. Okay, where's B? B is here. Okay, let's do this guy. This first one is going to be bending me this way. And so B is on this side of the beam. So what's that? That's the tension side. So that guy's going to be positive. That moment is 736.1 times 1,000 times 75 divided by 35, 156, 250. Right? And then point B from this guy, which is bending it towards you. Oh, he's also on the back. He's on the tension side. So he's going to be positive. 425 times 1,000 times 62.5 divided by 24414.062.5. Okay? Now we go to C, corner C, 
All right, let's bend him again. Corner C bends this way. So corner C from the bending around the Y is what? Intention, that's positive, right? So plus 736.1 times 1,000 times 75 divided by 35, 156, 250. Are you catching on? Point C, now I'm bending towards you again. So point C now is on the front side. That's the compression side, so that's negative. So minus 425 times 1,000 times 62.5 divided by 24414062.5. I don't know why I'm sounding like Ethel Merman there. Okay. And then I have to go look that up. Who was that? <laughs> okay. Then there's point D over here. Let's do it one more time. Bending towards me. Point D is on the compression side, so that's negative. So I'm back to negative again, right? Negative 736.1 times 1,000 times 75 times divided by 35, 156.250. Okay, and then... Point D for the other guy who's bending towards you again. Ooh, he's on the compression side, right? So this one's a minus and a minus. 425, 1,000 times 62.5 divided by big number, 24, 414, 062.5. Okay? So you see this one went positive, positive, negative, negative. This one went negative, positive, positive, negative. What's left to do? Put it in calculator, right? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay? So this, and I just got to calculate two things, really. I got to calculate that number and then that, that number, and I just add them together differently, right? So here we go. 736.1 times 75 times 1,000 equals, big old number, divided by 35, 156250 equals little number, okay? And again, everything that cancels out, the millimeters are going to cancel out, the meters cancel out, and that gives me two on the bottom. Newtons over millimeter squared, so this is definitely in megapascal. So this first number here is 1.57, okay? And the second number here is 425 times 1,000 times 62.5 equals divided by 24, four, oh, that's not a four, 414, 062.5 equals 1.09. This is 1.09. So here we go. You ready for the answers? Sigma A is equal to, right, 1.09 minus 1.57, right? Bam. Negative 0.482. Negative 0.482 megapascals. Newtons over millimeter squared, right? Sigma B is equal to, what are we doing at B? Ooh, we're adding them both together. So that's 1.57 plus 1.09. That's 2.66. 2.66 megapascals. Sigma at corner C. What is that guy? Well, that's going to be a positive and a negative. So that's going to be 1.57 minus 1.09. That's 0 0.480. Okay. And then finally, Sigma D at corner D. When you get at corner D, you get minus and a minus. So that's going to be just a 2.66 again, except this time negative. So minus 2.66 megapascals. Okay, there you go. And again, what does the negative mean? That the stress there is going to be compressive, and the stress there is going to be tensile, tensile, compressive. Okay, wow. Man, how much does a $1 pool noodle from the dollar store help on this problem just to get a visual picture of what's going on. I hope that helps you. I'll see you on the next video.